It's Soaping Sunday, episode three, and today we are going to make different natural colors <laughs> in our cold process soap. So we are using all natural ingredients to make these natural colors in soap. So we're gonna be experimenting and see what these different things that I have in my spice cabinet and different ingredients that I've ordered. We're gonna see what that looks like in my recipe of soap once it has gone through the saponification process. So I'm super excited. I am going to do a whole bunch of different colors and I'm really hopeful that we'll get some really nice colors that I can use in the future to make some really awesome colored soap. So I have it all typed up. I have 25 different colors that we are going to use using different ingredients. I'm gonna start by getting the ingredients all together for the lye, the goat milk, and all the oils so that those can start coming to temperature. And while those are cooling down, I will measure out all of the different colored ingredients to get those ready to mix in their own little individual containers. <laughs> Safety first. All right, so I've just added all the oils together. The lye and the goat milk is all mixed together, and that is cooling down. It got up to about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's got to cool down into the 80s or 90s, depending on where we get these oils to. Nice, and we are there. So that means I need to hurry up and get our ingredients together. I'm going to put each of the ingredients on these clear cutting boards so that way I can add oil to them and then mix those together so I can get the color saturated and then we'll get the saponification process started for the soap and put them in our molds mixed with our different colors. grams in each and now I'm mixing in the very first ingredient which is the gluten-free collodial oats and I'm going to be adding it to the mold following the pattern of which I typed it up and how I set it up here 
thankfully it was a perfect amount for the little Kit Kat mold here. And now we're gonna repeat that for the rest of these. So another 24 to go. So now it's a race against the clock. Now that the oils and the lye and goat milk is mixed together, there's only so much time before it turns to soap. And so I have to quickly get all of these completed. This second one needs a little bit more oil here before I can add it in. This is indigo. Okay, so the indigo is supposed to turn out blue in color. It's turning a gray right now, but I can see some blue undertones. adding any scent to these. I want to see if any of these natural ingredients change the scent of the soap when I add them in. This batter is getting thick. I gotta move faster. All right, we have one tray done. last cavity is going to be with no color added so we have a representative of the normal soap color for this recipe and it will also serve as our unscented one as well without anything added too so we'll have a base smell and a base color now there's still some soap batter left here so I'm going to try out some molds that I have I have little Christmas trees, like little pine trees. I have feathers. And then I'm gonna try the butterfly mold again, but this time I'm gonna completely cover the top so it has a thicker layer and see if maybe I can cut each one out and pop it out after letting it rest for a couple days. I figured I'd, I'll give it another try even though they cracked the first time. All right, the butterflies, I'm gonna make those blue. Because if this actually works, I wanna be able to put it inside of a future soap, and I need to be able to see a color difference so that you can actually make out what it is. So we'll go with indigo to get a blue color for the butterflies. All right, so I put a pretty thick layer on top there. Just gonna smooth that out. The batter's pretty thick at this point, so I'm not sure how that's gonna all turn out. And I've got extra, so I'm just gonna put all the extras after these in here, which is a Crafter's Choice Circle Medium Column Mold. That way the soap doesn't go to waste, and I can see what this ends up looking like this kind of mold and what I could do with it. Right. Let's do the trees. We need some green. Some spirulina. All right, for the feathers, I'm gonna add a little turmeric. See if I can darken it up just a little bit. But I don't wanna do too much. I just want it to be a little different from the base yellow.
Let's see if we can use this to stamp on the rest of the soap. I am so happy that this is now complete. I've got a lot of different color options to choose from and I can't wait to see how they look once they have hardened. I'm going to leave these in their molds overnight and see how they look tomorrow. I'll let you know. As much fun as this has been doing all the different colors and designs, it did take five hours. <laughs> so I am ready to head to bed. <laughs> see you tomorrow. It has been two days since we did all of these colors. So let's take a peek, see if we can unmold them and look at what the colors are looking like now. So here is the circle mold that we did. First, first up is nutmeg. So it has speckles throughout and a little bit of tan, but overall not a big difference in color. I printed out little name tags for them so that I can keep track. With just a little bit of water, they stick on there pretty good. This is rose clay. It's got some speckles, but overall I'm not seeing a big change in color. Next up, green clay. Again, not much of a color change. I think the clays I'm gonna have to use a lot more to actually show some color. Here we have spearmint leaf. You can definitely see the leaves in this one. Kaolin clay is supposed to make it white. Again, I'm not seeing much of a difference here. Calendula leaf. You can see the leaves in here. Ginger. I can see some specks of ginger modeled through here. Matcha. So, so far this is the richest color I've seen. So the matcha gave it quite a brown color. So I could, I could definitely see myself using this as a color in my soap since it came out so vivid with just a very small amount. All right, on to the next mold. So in the green cinnamon bun mold, we've got some colors here. All right, let's start with carob powder. So carob powder is a brown powder and it did come out a light brown. Next is tapioca powder. Tapioca powder is white. I don't know that it changed the color at all. I'm not seeing much of a difference here. And then cream of tartar is also a white powder. Again, I don't see much of a change in the color of the original soap. Next is pink Brazilian clay. So I am actually seeing some pink to this one. It's subtle, but there is pink. So maybe using a bit more of that and I could get a nice pink color. And then for the red Brazilian clay, it's a little bit deeper than the pink Brazilian clay. So I am seeing some red undertones in here. 
And this one is our control. So this is just a plain soap bar, unscented, uncolored. So it's just an off-white color, slightly yellow. All right, now for the Kit Kat mold. So the Kit Kat mold has more color options here. So let's go through these 12. All right, we're starting with Colonial Oats. So this is just oats that are whitish tan in color added to here. I don't see any of the texture in here, but the color seems about the same. If anything, the color is just slightly lighter. Next up is indigo. Now indigo is supposed to be a blue. This looks like a gray with blue undertones. This is rose hips. So it does have quite a bit of speckling in here and it did change the color to a pink color. Turmeric. So there's quite a bit of speckling, looks like red speckling in here with an orangey base. So this is ground up orange peel. So I can see some speckling in here of orange, but overall the main color is still the base soap color, but just with some orange speckling. Next up is carrot. So with ground carrot powder, Honestly, I don't see speckling or much of a color change here. This is chamomile. So I can see the speckling of the chamomile in here. The base color is a bit more tan. Charcoal, so this is a nice deep gray. Cocoa powder. Spirulina. We got a nice green out of the spirulina. Green tea. This actually has a lot of brown speckling and a brown base. And then the last one is beetroot. I really thought this was going to be like a beautiful pink color with how vivid and red the powder was, but. It looks almost the same as the plane. All right, let's see. So this, I had put a mold at the bottom that had a print on it. And I wanted to see if that print would come out on the soap. Oh wow, it really did. That's gorgeous. You can see the designs perfectly. The only issue is it's, it's curled because of the way it didn't fit right in the mold. But I could see using a cutout of this as a design for one of the soaps. It's really beautiful. It looks like roses with little leaves. Very pretty. That's pretty cool. And then the column mold that I put all different color extras in here plus the remaining batter that I had. Let's pop this open and see what we've got. Pretty cool. I got a little bit of a camo pattern here with the charcoal 
and the spirulina and the turmeric. So this I'll try some different options of cutting it into small circles. Maybe try cutting different shapes into it and we'll see how that goes. Now for the Christmas trees. Let's hope that this is thick enough that it's not going to crack when I unmold them. Ooh, I see details. I'm just trying to do this really slow and really gentle in the hopes to keep it all intact. Oh my goodness, they are little trees. Very cool. All right, let's see feathers. See if this works. Is it ready? Oh, I'm seeing details. Wow, those are cool looking. Very cool. I do like those. And they popped right out. That wasn't bad. All right, moment of truth. The butterflies that cracked the last time. Let's see. Success or failure. I'm a little nervous. <laughs> They're gorgeous! And they stayed together. That is amazing. Very cool. So this is great. We have some colors here that I can get started with creating different designs and different things. I definitely want to try mixing some of these colors and seeing if I can make other colors with them and certainly adding higher concentrations of some to see if I can bring out the color some more. I do really like the turmeric color, the spirulina on the little Christmas trees, the charcoal and the indigo are definitely two that I'll use. The indigo is what I used on the butterflies and those are pretty cool. I do like the pop of color in this red Brazilian clay. And I really like the matcha color. This brown is really vibrant and I like it. The pink Brazilian clay, the green clay, and then the kaolin clay. I'm going to try making them with more clay in there, try to saturate them some more in clay in the hopes of bringing out more color from them. Because it would be pretty cool to have a white, a green, and a pink. <laughs> but that's a great starting off point for me to get started and imagining different soap designs and what we're going to add to our future soap line. Thanks for joining me on this soaping Sunday. And if you haven't started making soap yet, what are you waiting for? Get your soap on. Farm, a wicked awesome farm. Watch this channel to learn what to do. We love to farm and we'll show you. Yeah.